actual vehicle we have behind us is the uh, armored gun systems. Uh, it was type classified as the M8 vehicle. Uh, our, what we're talking about here is more what's uh, a requirement that's emerging called mobile protected firepower. Uh, essentially a very similar requirement to have a deployable platform that can that's expeditionary in nature that can be uh, quickly used to get uh, forcible entry into a, uh, a domain that's controlled by the enemy. The, the need for having this kind of capability really has existed since World War II when you were basically putting people down and the, the most capability they had was their boots and a rifle clearly outmatch when you're behind enemy lines. So the intent of this was to provide more firepower. There were systems along the way that attempted to do that. Nothing actually met the full set of requirements until a more rigorous program and a requirement set was, was created in the 90s, early 90s. And this vehicle was a genesis of that. It was, again, an air deployable, a C-130 deployable platform that would be released, or they call it LVAD, low velocity uh, airdrop and uh, it parachutes down into the, the landing zone and within 15 minutes you cut off the chutes, jump in the vehicle, the paratroopers jump in separately, jump in the vehicle, you're off and running with a 105 cannon which fires about 12 rounds a minute, have about 30, 30 rounds in the vehicle. So you can do a quite, quite a lot of uh, damage with that capability. Well, some of the technologies that we have put on there is, for example, you see the, uh, the band track. That's an, an option that we're considering. You can get you know, several hundreds and hundreds of pounds off of the system, up to 800 pounds, by going to a band track. Much lighter, in many ways, much more reliable than having multiple steel links along the way. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're assessing. We're looking at a lot of other enhancements, like going to a higher horsepower power engine that's much lighter. Uh, engine technology has really gone a long way since 1990 and uh, as we're doing our market surveys we see a lot of engines that show a lot of promise. But the reason, the real reason we brought this vehicle here today is to show that there is something real that can meet that requirement and have a conversation with the Army leadership and, and get a better understanding of, as they see the threat environment changing, uh, what kind of modifications, and I really believe a lot of them will be relatively minor, would you make to a platform such as this to, uh, to, to make it something we'd want to launch into production with? That right now, there's been an RFI release really to do an industry survey. Uh, after that, there would be you know the formal RFP proposal process, but really because we can take advantage of the investment, a couple hundred million dollars that was initially put into the AGS program, it makes a natural springboard to move into a, uh, a follow-on uh, production. Now this vehicle isn't ready for production today. What, what would make sense is to uh, initiate a quick prototype phase, so within 18 to 24 months, built up a couple of prototypes that go through a couple of years of government testing. Based on that, we would be able to go into a low rate production. So within a five year period, you're still talking a very rapid acquisition compared to most vehicle programs, but that's because you take a mature technology, non-developmental item, and move that forward.